Welcome, Ralph. Thank, thank, thank. Hi there. Um, I have a really bad cold, so I'll hopefully not be coughing. But if I do, I'll do like this. So bear with me. I've taken every pills I could find on the way here. So hopefully, will keep me speeded up. Uh, what's worth mentioning about me is that I'm officially the global business owner for our internet environment uh, at Electrolux. Uh, and that, of course, is driving the internet strategy. It makes it easier for me to drive it in the, in the right direction. So uh, it's an important thing to say. I've been doing that since 2002. About Electrolux, I will not, this is the only slide about our company. What is important to mention is that we, it's a lot of us, 52,000 in 60 countries. If talking about the white colors, which is primarily the main target group for collaboration, at this point, it's around 60, between 16 and 20,000 employees. And, and 60 countries, of course, then we have the challenges of languages and culture. So what is working in the US might not be working in China, if we're talking about the rollout of a collaboration tool. About our internet, it's, uh, I think we're quite alone here that we have three different content management systems, EpiServer front-end, SharePoint for team sites, and IBM Connections for the more social collaboration parts. And the team sites we had since 2008, and IBM Connections we launched last year in November. And one thing is important to mention is that we have a quite strong buy-in from the whole company for our intranet. We have around 95% visiting a regular basis and around 60% visiting daily. One thing that I'm measuring now is that how many are in the collaboration areas, and that is currently 14%. So and that's the number we want to increase. The first thing we did when we launched IBM Connections was to actually we revise the internet strategy. Since I joined the Electrolux, it's, it's always been, I think, a group management decision. Uh, the strategy is owned by, by the head of communications, member of group management. And now the new focus, slightly new focus, is that we want to engage people. Before it was more to update, inform, but now it's engage. And that is not the same thing. And the three areas that we're focusing on is content, collaboration, and self-service. So I'll be focusing mostly on about the collaboration things today. We've been using it now almost for one year. And, and when I'm thinking about it, I think, what's the big, big difference and what's the big bang? It's this. For me, that, that, that I don't have to rely on the email inbox. I can work smarter. This is my email inbox where I have emails to the left, but I can communicate to my network on the right side, right, posting short updates or respond to other comments. Pablo there, for instance, is part of our IT group supporting the, the whole environment. And we've been working like this now for, for almost a year, and I think this is one of the quick wins. And a short story. This is another I was plug into the mail client uh, collectivities. When we launched it, it was some of the things in this suite that was really hard to understand. I understand blogs, wikis, but what is activities? When this popped up in my email inbox, um, and I was running a big project, it was when we launched the mobile internet a few months back. Friday afternoon, my wife was eager to get me home waiting for dinner, and I realized that I'm, I'm not a structured person. I'm good at some things, but I'm not good at planning and leading projects. And we had involved some 20 people in the project, from IT architecture to communication heads and design people, in workshops, and I had everything in my inbox. And I felt that on Monday, we're taking the decision about the design, and I want everyone to feel a part, part of this project. And my wife wants me to be home in 30 minutes. I started to drag things from my inbox, from my calendar invite where I had some attachments. Uh, meeting minutes were in the email. I dragged them to a section called minutes. I did that for 10 minutes, ended up by inviting everyone who's been part of the project 
sending them an email and saying that on Monday afternoon, I want your feedback about this because we take the decision. And I went home and I had goosebumps all over my body. I promise, I was speed at the whole dinner. And this is what it's about. It's a new, we can work smarter. And it's really, really working well. If I go back quickly to our internet strategy, we are good at some things, and that is to inspire with news, corporate news, keep employees updated, and ease access anytime and from anywhere. I can access it from here or from my home PC or my mobile phone. But we are not good, I would say, or we have a great distance to cover in other areas. And that includes making collaboration an integral part of the business, meaning that's a natural way, that's the way we do work at Electrolux, and also involving the leaders. And this is just a snapshot of um, how employees rate our intranet as a channel for informing. And it's been like this for years because we communicate strategies in a news format and they rate it as the best channel. So we have a great buy-in for that. Now we want to tap into the engagement area as well. Now, how do we then in involve the leaders? And why should we involve the leaders? I think this says everything. And because what we're trying to accomplish is a change in work behavior. We should work in a different way. And that will not happen if we don't go via leaders because leaders is the most important inf influencer in the company. So, when I meet with leaders, I've been doing that now, since we launched IBM Connections, I'm showing them this slide. This is a study from uh, the Global Internet Report earlier this year. And it's a study, 440 global companies, asking leaders and employees, what's the value with this? And it's quite striking that you get some really quick winnings in engagement, information updates, I'm feeling better informed, but also knowledge sharing, and, but also in innovation. And in many companies, including ours, innovation is vital. It's part of our, as our CEO says, DNA, or should be part of our DNA. And I saw that McKinsey came out with a report earlier, I think it was last week, also supporting this. And, and, and of course, a lot of the top management, they, they, they listen to McKinsey. When I meet with leaders, uh, they see, I don't call it social business, I don't call it Facebook, because they will just say, no, 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 we're here to do business. I think we need to find the vocabulary that they use and feel comfortable with. And I find th three words that I will focus on, and that is speed, reach, and impact. One example is that they can communicate faster to their employees in a more personal, engaging way than they do today. We know that personal information, instead of formal information, or I would say informal information instead of formal information, is four times more powerful. So that's, I think, this is where we will strike group management. Another area where we've been quite successful is involving leaders, not by approaching them, but approaching the programs. All companies have big programs, and the more global and the more people, employees they involve, the better, because you get a bigger reach. I want to mention two programs here who are using it today or are starting to using it. And one is customer care. We're trying to change the global customer care organization very localized in all the countries. We started by posting letters. Angry customers have sent our former CEO, Hans Storberg. We posted in the community, and we asked for feedback. And wow, it's been really been growing. And then now we have, I think, four members in group management are part of that community as well. Sometimes they go in the discussion, sometimes don't. But they're there as members. And we have actually done, implemented new th things, features, functions, processes, because in the dialogue with the business, we realized that, well, we don't know everything. It's really, really successful. Another area is our product management, where open innovation is a hot topic now, that if you want our employees to be part of our innovation, come up with ideas. We don't have the power to 
channel that through our patent or law area, and we cannot take care of a thousand incoming ideas. We cannot manage that with resources. So open innovation that, that anyone can write an idea, everyone can vote on the ideas, and let's say we pick the 10 top best-rated ideas. It's great. And that is something that we're going to roll out as well. And then we shouldn't forget about that, is that we are moving from this flat, boring address book, everyone is looking the same, to a social address book. And for me, it's very strange that, that we have senior leaders visible in articles with picture and everything, but when you go to their uh, profile page, it's no photo. They have no friends, they're not doing anything. And I think the leaders need to know that, that well, at least keep it updated, but you can use it to communicate more effectively. That's the leaders. How do we approach the end users then? They are equally very important. We launched IBM Connections in November, and we quickly realized it's a, it's a Rolls Royce. Um, everyone is positive about the concept, but they find it so not intuitive. And they're used to Facebook and LinkedIn, and that's a message to IBM that we need to speed up in terms of, well, learn from the internet. Um, one user in the pilot group approached me in the dinner party and saying this was a fiasco. It's not good to hear that. But what we did is that we, we gathered 200 employees, we've done a global usability study, filming users, interviewing them, and they had done cart sorting events, saying then, where would you go to find a blog? Where would you go to, to create a wiki or share a document? And we had developed a whole new structure that our collaboration tools be part of and in all the languages. So an end user in, in, in Thailand, they will know that if I want to share a document, I go here. Go forward. End users, they don't think blogs. They think, I want to post a message or communicate. Uh, that is a big challenge. But I think on the journey so far, we have really strong ambassadors that it never dipped, it keeps growing. Uh, we halted the, the marketing of the, the social platform because we want to do our homework first. And now when, it's a, it's, when it's as good as it can be, then we'll start communicating in, in many languages and have competitions and stuff like that. The most active wiki is about R&D. I think it's great. I would say the microblogging, the thing, the status updates that you post a comment and someone in your network responds works extremely well. I think that's probably the, the best feature that we, we saw directly. We solved a lot of problems or issues that way internally. But it takes time. I'm very impatient myself, but when we launched it, we had a quick tour in the, in the head office. People could comment, discuss, come approach us. And I would say, none of ten said, well, I don't have time for this. What is this? Well, it's nice, but, you know, after six months, we hadn't done anything. They came in, well, this is really interesting. I, I want to look into this now. And mm, six months. Not, the only thing that happened was time. So give it time. And I think you need to roll a strategy for a lot of things, not just the tool. Think end users, leaders, and not the least, how to create the seamless experience for the users. Because we need to be aware that our, our employees spend maybe four times, maybe four hours a day on the email client. Well, for them, collaboration starts there. They shouldn't need to leave this view to post a message or take part of a blog or that's one thing. As well as that, you see it's a lot of photos here, but now, if you're involved in a chat, we get an email that you, you see the business card and you can quickly get into people's profile pages. It's more of the seamless user experience. They don't think, what tool is that? Or they think everything is the internet. One benefit we have is that we have 450 editors globally in all the 60 countries that are pushing out CEO letters in a news format. And they are, of course, very important because we want to move over from this news format to a more blogging, networking approach. What we've done is that they can now, if they post a static page in EpiServer, that's 
the, the CMS here in this case. They can add, add a few tags. It's from IBM Connections. And it will automatically display content coming from IBM Connections. Same thing here. We have a lot of readers on these pages, but not in Connections. OK, but they shouldn't need to leave this page. They should see here that it's a related blog I need to look into. Sharing is important, and, and uh, we have in, uh, created an easy to share function so any, anyone can click share, add a personal comment, and post the message. It's going to their network, but with a link to that page. And this is a feature we'll start using for the senior leaders because they're probably part interviewed in the article, but by clicking share, adding a personal comment, they can add a personal flavor to the article. And not the least that reaching our travelers that are not maybe sitting on in front of their computers. So we have the mobile intranet. We launched it this spring. Um, and it's browser-based. It's very simple that you have the latest news on the start screen. And you can go to your community section and see the latest updates and respond. You can also reach the activities, blogs, for instance, those areas. And in, in the latest version of IBM Connection, you can reach all the areas. And it's, this is what I mean that let's say you had everyone in the company is following the CEO, and the CEO is writing something, his status update here. Everyone will see his picture and his personal comment under top updates. In this case, I'm not in my email inbox. It's much, much more powerful than sending out an email. And we did the same approach when we launched our intranet, the new space, the intranet, because we said that, OK, we had a European organization, 7,000 employees. Well, let's put them in, an, in, the, in the send list for our, the news, because everyone is sent out as an email when we, when we publish a news article. We went back to the leader saying that, well, now you can communicate with a news format to 7,000 employees. And they said, that's great. We'll do exactly the same, but with this concept, because it's more powerful and more engaging. And this is a quick snapshot of our intranet and the latest version of IBM Connections 3 that is coming. What we've done now, and it's being released hopefully within a week, is that we have integrated so whenever you are in the internet, you will have the same top menu. In the previous version, we had a sub menu when you were in the social area and you had top menu or still eGate. But now you can reach all the pages by one click. Another very confusing thing was that you have, we had two separate profile areas. You went into the EpiServer profile to handle your photo, and you went into the IBM Connections profile to handle your some other things, we merge them into one. And I know we have 1,000 employees a month visiting the EpiServer profile section. Well, from a, within a week or two, they will go here. What, you, what we also did is that it will be much easier to update your contact information because it will push information down to the nodes LDAP. Instead of going to the, it's a lot of clicks to go the standard way in the client. Here it's one click and you update and it's, it's done. Some senior leaders even didn't know that they, their title was wrong. And they changed the position maybe half a year ago because no one's going there. Well, they, they don't go there to check their own information. And that could be another communication activity. Have you checked your title recently? Well, here it is. Make sure it's updated. And this is coming, uh, this will be a revamped intranet following the usability study with a new design, looking a bit more modern. And if you see the, the top menu is actually developed by the 200 users that was part of the project. And the social feed and the social areas will be part of, wherever you go to on the internet, you will, you will see it. It might be minimized, but you can expand it. So you will be able to post the message, not only the start page, 
the salt page. That's the situation today. So here you can picture that the latest news story, the editor has activated a discussion. It says 106. You have 106 comments to that article. One of the comments could be from the CEO. Let's say everyone is following the CEO. Everyone will see that under my network. Well, they recognize his face, and they will see his personal comment with a link to the article. To the left, formal corporate communication, still important. To the right, personal, more engaging communication, which you can work more on. Equally, things that is happening in your SharePoint areas will be part of the feed as well. Our employees, they don't tell the difference. This is SharePoint, this is IBM Connections. They think, well, it's the same, but it's not. And as I said in the beginning, everything about collaboration will be called communication and share, communicate and share, and in local language. That was uh, it. Mange tak, Ralf. Jeg synes, det var rigtig interessant at høre øh, et eksempel på, hvordan det her det kan gribes an. Jeg tror også, det blev klart, at øh, ja, der er noget teknologi til at understøtte det her, men det er i høj grad også øh, en organisatorisk adoption og organisatoriske og kulturelle overvejelser, man skal lave sig. Et godt eksempel. Der er formentlig ikke to organisationer eller to virksomheder, som vil implementere løsninger på præcis samme måde. Øh, der vil være mange forskellige måder at gribe det her an på. Vi har arbejdet i IBM med en lang række andre kunder, og vi har opsamlet også en masse erfaringer omkring, hvad kan være best practice i givende situationer. Det vil vi meget gerne dele med jer, hvis I er interesseret i det. Kom endelig til os, og så kan vi fortsætte dialogen derfra. Og med det, vi har et par minutter, hvis der er nogen, der har nogle spørgsmål til Ralf. Der er et spørgsmål hernede fra. You have SharePoint, yes. Well, actually, we did a benchmark study. Uh, uh, so, sorry, Ralph. The, the question yeah. was, uh, having SharePoint and connections uh, uh, within the solution, uh, what were the considerations about that yes. uh, combination? Um, our intention was to, to use SharePoint in this case, but... but uh, when we looked into, we, got a, we did a pre-study, we looked into the, the things that was most cru crucial for this project, uh, and this was SharePoint 2007. It, it couldn't realize that, you know, the wall, the tagging, and stuff like that. So, and then we did a proper benchmarking study. We benchmarked IBM Connections 2.5, SharePoint 2007, and Epi Server. And the big winner here was IBM Connections. Uh, um, plus, uh, Electrolux had signed an agreement with IBM to continue with the messaging for another five years. And of course, messaging is part of your daily, what you do. You chat, you email and stuff. And the collaboration needs to be part of that. So uh, I think those two main, main, main reasons. Thank you, Alf. Uh, any other questions for now? Okay. One more time. Thank you, Ralph. Okay, thank and uh, now we will have a break. And in uh, 10 minutes, yes, please give Ralph an applause.